House of Destiny, I want to take a moment today to thank you for your partnership and your generous giving to our Boots on the Ground partnership. When you choose to be a monthly partner with us through Boots on the Ground, you are fulfilling the greatest commission of all, to bring the gospel to the darkest places on earth. Through Boots on the Ground, you are changing lives around the world with life-saving surgeries, feeding programs, and education. If you aren't yet a partner, I encourage you to click the partner link above. Thank you for your love and your generosity. Hello, House of Destiny. I'm Greg Wark, and it's my pleasure and honor to be able to present the word to you today. Let's go ahead and open up in prayer. Um, and there's a reason for that. I've always been taught you prepare the soil before you plant the seed. And of course, the word of God is the seed and we have to prepare our hearts. And it's in times like these where we have a pandemic. I'm 64 years old. I never ever lived through a pandemic. Uh, I did study them, but they're fear, they're, there's fear everywhere. And so when we are looking at the Word of God or even listening to the Word of God being preached, we really have to prepare our hearts. What does that mean? It means, Lord, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let things go right now. And that's what I want you to do because I, I think the Lord has something He wants to say to you today about, about hope. The title of my message is what, what Hell Fears and hopefully you can build a lot of what hell fears inside of you as a result of today's word. So Lord, today we open up our hearts to you and we ask God that you remove us from the standing of fear, from the thoughts of dread, and that you God would open up your word to us so that we can hear things that would be otherwise obscured Otherwise, we would be unable to hear it. So remove those things from us now. We submit to you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, amen. Again, the title of my message is What Hell Fears. I wanna start with Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. I'm only gonna read one verse and it goes like this. Paul said, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I don't know if you're like me, but I've I've read that about a thousand times. And I've heard it preached. I went through the season where all the faith churches were in existence and that, that scripture meant you can be a millionaire, you can be a billionaire, you can have this. If you have enough faith, you better have enough faith. Oh man, sorry, but I got faith. And I have all of you out there to make sure that my faith is completed. But 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 at home, I'm going, what do I got to do? Because that's always the way it was left. It was always left that way when it was preached to me. If you have enough faith, you'll get this. And when I didn't get it, guess what? I'd sit down at night and I'd think, I didn't have enough faith. Well, my friends, that's not what it means at all. And the people that tell you that know that. But I can tell you this, that when you read the book of Hebrews, that who, the guys and women and men who lived faith as a substance of what is hoped for, the evidence of what is not seen, they lived that out. So God intended that our study of the heroes of faith be able to mirror the, the, the actions, the physicality of what that passage in Hebrews 11.1 1 means. But it speaks of the exploits, the heroes of faith, their absolute unconditional fearlessness of anything. Their absolute unconditional fearlessness of anything. That's what faith is. That's the faith Paul is talking about here. We love those stories, don't we? We love to read of their exploits, imagining ourselves being in that place and then being able to do that because something overshadows us called faith, we would we love those stories. But my friends, in times like these, we must do more than love those stories. We have to become those stories. Let me say that again. 
In times like these, we need to more, we need to, to do more than love the stories. This is our opportunity to be the stories. Now, let me say this to you. Have you ever thought of this fact? That every single story about a person in the book of Hebrews, every single, single story that Paul tells is a story that was done in a time of turmoil, pandemic, cruci uh, 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 cruci you know, the times when, when martyrs were made. Persecution is the word I'm looking for. It, they were never done while someone's just sitting around doing nothing. They were always in a time of crisis. And right now, God is searching for men and women who he can give something. And it's the most important word in Hebrews chapter 11, and it's called hope. Do you realize that without God's hope, there is no faith? Faith is a substance. Faith is the substance of what is first required for there to be true hope or true, true faith. It's what's hoped for. And God engenders that hope in each and every one of us. And so to be the recipient of that kind of hope where you can walk into the lion's pit, lion's den, excuse me, or you can, you can do these great things that we read about. We can't be ruled by fear or dread or Unbelief, COVID-19 has proved something. It's proved that we can't have our complete hope in man, his institutions, or his systems. We can't have our hope in man, in his institutions. We, we don't know that we're gonna get our paycheck. We, we can't have our hope in our boss, in our job, our, our, our stock market, our governments. Do you realize governments can be completely destroyed by a little virus? This is worldwide now. It has the potential to kill off a lot of people. That's not something you want to have your hope in. Sometimes I pray, I watch President Trump on the TV and I find myself, for lack of a better term, feeling sorry for him. Here's a man that has given every ounce of his being to creating a, a booming economy, to creating what presidents before him, many, not a, they didn't even come close to it, restructuring the political system, bringing hope back to people, uh, revealing the, the deceit in the media. And in just a little bit of time, in over 30 days, they've wiped out almost all that he created. And I look at him and I think, gosh, this man doesn't deserve this, to have done so well and to have it all come down like this. And then I realized something, because I wrote him a letter once, he wrote me one back. I've seen him, I've watched his character. I know, don't care whether you hate him or love him, I can just tell you as a man, I firmly believe that the reason he's optimistic in times like this is because his hope is in God. And I dare prophesy that by the end of his terms, that he will have brought this country back along with the men and women of faith that are listening right now. The devil fears hope. He doesn't fear faith. He fears hope because if you have his hope, you have, the, you have that seed inside of you that can break every barrier, fearlessly run right into the lion's den. My friends, hope is the key right now, but it's not just hope in the system. It's not hope in what the government's gonna do. How, when am I getting my check? It's hope in God. It's realigning ourselves to say to the Lord, God, I hope and I love, I trust you. The other day I was walking and praying and I was saying, Lord, I help me to love you more. Because I know that if I love God, I'm, I'm walking in the midst of his, his hope, which means the, 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 the potential is there for me to do great exploits for God. You know, if you wanna know how much the devil hates hope, um, I, I just came to my mind, the, mo the movie Liar Liar, um, where this lawyer dad is constantly telling his little guy and his mom 
that he's going to do things, but he never does them. And after a while, the kid doesn't believe his daddy anymore, which has really happened. It happens to all children, all of us. Go through. We see the the attack on hope, and and that movie showed us that when he had to tell the truth all the time, the one thing that came out of it was a purified person. The devil loves to tell us things and then fail to complete. Listen, he wants to promise you things, and then he never intended to do it in the first place. He's a liar. Our society is infected today, not so much by a virus as it is lies. He's the ruler of lies. So I want to talk to you for a minute about dangerous hope. If you want to, if you want to read a passage that talks about dangerous hope, Proverbs three, five, and six. Listen to this: Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust. No, it says trust in the Lord with just just a little bit of your heart. Is that what it says? No, it says all your heart. God's not looking for people to trust, kind of trust Him. He deserves more than that. With all of your heart, lean not unto your own understanding. What men understand is going on right now may not be even remotely close to what God wants to reveal to us. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him. And then he directs your path. Now that's dangerous hope. You see, if our hope is not first and foremost in God, then we walk on dangerous ground. We walk on that ground where we are absolutely surely going to be let down. And when hope gets attacked, it has a very bad effect. If our hope is in our job, our business partner, a person, our investments, our stock market, and our hope isn't. Founded in God, See, there's nothing wrong with having hope in those. If you're not, if if you have your foundation hope in God, but if you don't have that foundation hope in God, then when all of those fail, our heart takes a hit. Now let me say this, this is really important right now because I'm about to identify something in your life that may be going on that you were completely unaware of. You see, maybe maybe you've been going through this season where you know something's wrong, but you can't figure it out. I'm about to tell you what it is. And it comes out of Proverbs 13, 12. And it says this, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Let me say that again. Hope put off, not not accomplished, or even if it was lied, when, when we were completely lied, our hope was based on a lie. When that happens, our heart becomes sick. Some people today would call it depression. Maybe you think you're depressed. Maybe you've got all this anxiety, this pessimism, this unbelief. All this stuff is going on in you, but you can't seem to identify it. It's confusing to you. It's because, it's because your heart is sick because your hope was put in the wrong place. And when your heart is sick, it's not necessarily here that you feel it. It's in the center of your being. It's in the center where you feel this, this, this thing that's hard to explain. I've gone through it many times in my own life and I know what it feels like and I can tell you it's not depression, but it does engender that. It's not anxiety, but it does engender that. The thing about a sick heart is that once you recognize what it is, once you realize, Lord, I, my, 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 what I'm feeling now is because my heart's sick. Then you can take it to God and say, Lord, my hope wasn't in you. When we have a sick heart, we're more vulnerable than ever. I remember when as a young boy, 12 years old, watching my mother die, live her last moments on earth. I said, God, don't let her die. Don't let her die. And then I heard her say the words, Lord, don't let me die. I want to be with my children. And in that moment, 
I was pretty vulnerable because she breathed her last breath in a few minutes. And after that happened, I said to God, I will never trust you again. As a 12 year old boy in a closet, because I didn't want anybody to see me, I uttered those words that I later repented of when I knew the truth. But my heart was sick. And today you may be in that place. There's been a lot of reason for us to come to realizing how much our hope is where it shouldn't be. My friends, just don't stay there. Let me close with this because, you know, when our hope in Christ is our foundation, when all else fails, when we can't go to church, whoever thought that would be the case, when we can't have Easter Sunday church in our services, in, in our churches, when our job, we don't have a job. Money's not coming in. If our hope is in where it's supposed to be, we're steady. We're able to receive his hope in, in, in the midst of that mess. And we're ready to join the, story, the stories of the heroes. And that's what your opportunity is to this COVID virus. I can't tell you it's going to be short-lived. Anybody who does is a liar. And they're, they're preaching to you in your vulnerability. They don't know that. Be careful what you listen to. Right now, you need to be listening to the Holy Spirit to tell you what to think. Are you sick today? Have you come to realize that your hope is in the wrong places? Good. You're sick and your hope's in the wrong places. Now you know what to do. What do you do in that time? You simply say, Father, forgive me. My hope was where it shouldn't be, but God, now I place my hope and trust in you, which is what I did that day that you received me as your child and adopted me into my faith. My friends, today, if this kind of hit home, I would like you to put your hand right here in the center of your chest. And Lord, I ask that in Jesus' name, that you would restore the hope of Christ, the foundation of Christ, that you would restore that to the sick heart. There, receive it. Some of you are really being touched right now. Just receive what God is doing. That that hope is beginning to, it's, that knot is beginning to give up because your hope is being restored in something, in something that's bigger than anything that can be seen. Let the fear go now. Let the dread go and let God circle you again with his love. Lord, I pray today that as men and women of true hope, that you would turn that hope into an act of faith that would result in us doing great things for you. I pray that in the mighty, powerful, holy name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. My friends, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to have your prayer request. We need to know what's, what's going on in your life because we're your family. And families care about each other. And at the House of Destiny, we don't take what you send us lightly. And I would appreciate it deeply if you let us know what we can do to help you. May the Lord be with you in this time and in this season. But may you find yourself strong, not weak, filled with faith, not filled with fear, and filled with the Holy Spirit. God bless you. God loves you so much. And guess what? We do too, because he lives in our hearts. We want to hear from you. You can email us at hope at houseofdestiny.org. And be sure also to tuck in a testimony uh, when you have opportunity. God is great. He's doing a wonderful work and we're excited about it. Thank you for watching the House of Destiny's YouTube channel. Please subscribe to get all of our latest content. This video was brought to you by all of our generous supporters. If you'd like to give, click the link in the description. We have new episodes every week, so stay tuned. And remember, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now.